I'm a multiple award-winning actress and filmmaker. Last year, the Toronto International Film Festival picked eight movies from Nigeria to showcase at the City to City selection of which Lagos was being showcased. And my movie, Okafor's Law, was one of those movies picked to showcase. And it was just an amazing experience because for the first time, Nollywood movies were being presented to the whole world. We were actually on a world platform. And this year, the Toronto International Film Festival announced me as one of the ambassadors for the Share Her Journey program. I'm not just making my mark as an actor and as a filmmaker, I've also recently launched my own fashion line, Omonio Bully by AVE. I've partnered with an existing designer and we have a line that is both fresh, fun and all woman. My name is Omonio Bully. This is how I got here. I've always acted, I've always loved acting. I started acting professionally in my teenage years, my first year in university. I did it for a little while, about a year plus, and then it was clashing with school, so I had to leave it. You know, I, I was hoping to get back after school was done, but then I got married right after school. So there was no way I could get back immediately because we actually left the country after a while, and then we were away for long. When we came back, I didn't immediately go into acting, even though I kind of wanted to because when I was away, I would watch Nigerian movies, I would see people that we all started together, and I just kept thinking I should be there, you know. But there was really no opportunity to get back immediately, so I tried other things. I actually got a job in an oil firm, but I turned it down because when I went for the placement, I just kept thinking, this is not where I want to be. I don't, I don't think I belong here. I think I'm just going to waste my life if I'm here. So I ended up not accepting the job. But then I started cooking. People don't know that. <laughs> I, started, I started cooking. I would cook and take to offices during lunch hour, you know, just anything to get by. But it was, it was even that was quite difficult, you know, because at some point, I still felt this wasn't what I wanted to do. So I thought to myself, why not just go back and try this acting thing again? So that's how I, you know, came back after over 10 years. It was very difficult to get back when I came back. It was almost, I was the new girl. I mean, you don't leave something for 10 years and expect that you're just going to pick up from where you left off. So I was the new girl and I don't, I'm not sure if everyone wanted a new girl. Like all the leading ladies were established. You know, no one really wanted to give someone new a chance. Um, so it was a huge, huge, huge struggle. You know, I mean, people see me today and think, oh, she just came from nowhere. No, I didn't. <laughs> it was a huge struggle. I, um, I remember going around to people who had been there when I was there. And, you know, some of them weren't really doing it as much as they were in the past. Like some of the producers were not really producing as much anymore. And I mean, people like MME Song were now like top producers and all of that. And I really wanted to meet her. So some, somehow I got to meet her. I think it was Lancelot that introduced me to her. And I went to see her. She auditioned me and said, oh, you're, you're quite good. She was pleasantly surprised. And she says, oh, I, I have a role in a movie that I'm about to do that I wanted to give to you. But I think it's after hearing you read, I think it's really too small for you. It's like, it's not too small, just give me. <laughs> I'm just ready to do anything at this point, you know. But then she's like, oh, no, don't worry, I'll save you for something better. I was so disappointed. But anyways, I didn't have a choice. I waited. And out of the blues, one day she calls me up and says, where are you? I said, I'm in my house. I'm in Lagos. She goes, can you come to us about now? It's like, right now? She said, yeah, right now. It's okay. So the next day, obviously, I went to Asaba. And apparently she was doing a movie. They, were, they had already started shooting and and um, one of the characters in the film, the actor didn't show up, the actress rather didn't show up and they had waited for her for three days. She kept giving one excuse or the other and she just remembered me. And that was how I um, did my first movie with her. And it was actually a major role, you know, so it wasn't the lead, but it was like a supporting, a major supporting character. So it was, it was, it was really good. But then um, I still, didn't, I still wasn't out there, you know, even after that, I did one or two other little things. And then I got the role in the figure in with Kulia Polanyo and, you know, that movie came out and I was just like, oh, where did this new girl come from? 
you know. And then I did Uncle Baby with um, Lonzo, and that was it, really. That just kind of sealed it. Oh, okay, this girl's here to stay. She's not going anywhere anytime soon. I don't remember actually going for auditions, but then going to see people, going to see producers, going to see people who actually making movies and then just looking at you like, oh, okay, all right, no problem. When we have something, we'll call you. But they never really quite call you, you know. Um, I remember actually going to Sabah once because someone said to come. And then I got there and I was there for like three days and nothing happened. Didn't get any role in any film. And I was like, so why did you tell me to come? It doesn't make any sense. I've been here for three days and nothing is happening. And you're actually in the process of making a film and you're not putting me in the film. So what's the point? And I had to go back to to Lagos disappointed and all of that. So yes, there were so many times I felt they could have given me something, but they didn't. I would definitely say the figuring because um, it's there was a lot of publicity around the figuring. It was that movie everybody heard about. You know, it was it was big. It was a big production. Um, there was a lot of talk about it. It's, we made so much noise, and you know, somehow or the other, it's it's it brought me out as this new girl to watch out for. You know, even though I really wasn't the new girl, but it brought me out as this new girl to watch out for. So suddenly, everyone was looking at me. Like, okay, all right, okay, so she's, she's she can act. <laughs> you know, so um, I would definitely say the figuring was that movie that gave me that push that I desperately needed. And then Uncle Baby came and was like the icing on the cake. It's like, okay, finally we're going to cement this. She's, she's here and she's, she's not going anywhere. So I've always written, right? Um, even those times when I was struggling to get back into the industry where no one really gave me a role, I would write and trade the scripts for, for roles. You know, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to give you the script. You don't have to pay me. Just let me act. You know, just give me a role in the film. You know, so I'd write, I'd give to people like MME Song, or some of that producers. And um, I always say no two directors will direct any script or any story the same way. You know, so I, and I write in pictures, so I see what I'm writing when I'm writing. So when I would see the movies, it wouldn't be exactly what I had in my head when I was writing. Not to say that they weren't good, but it was not my vision. And I just thought to myself that, if my scripts or my stories were going to have my DNA, were going to be me, then I'd have to direct them myself. So it was a scary thought when I first thought about it. But then I, I'd been around uh, movie sets, you know, as an actor for a while. And I just thought, I, I think I can do this, you know. But I didn't want to just do it. So I went to film school. I went to New York Film Academy. I did a short course in digital filmmaking. And I thought, yes, I'm ready to go. But then it took me four years after film school to make my first film. Because to make a film, guess what? You need money, right? And I didn't have the money to, to make my first film. So it, was, it, was, it still was another struggle for four years trying to put money together or get money to actually make my first film. And um, it, it didn't come together quite as easily as I thought it would. I'd spoken to so many people, I'd, I'd knocked on so many doors, I'd gone to so many organizations, you know, just trying to get product placement or some sort of, um, you know, some, some, some money to make this film. And it was just so many no's. It was like, no, 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 all through, you know, and it was really frustrating. But I kept talking about, you know, making this film. And four years after I started talking about making a film, I was speaking to a fellow actor and he says, oh, uh, oh, is that the story you told me? You told me like four years ago. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, <laughs> have I been talking about this thing for four years? I said, no, it's time to actually make this film. I don't care how I'm going to make it. Now I'm ready, and I didn't have any money, <laughs> so I set out to make the film. I gathered whatever we had at home, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to make this film. Somehow or the other, I don't. I think it's because I was finally in that space where I said, I'm going to do this thing any which way some of those people that you know i'd spoken to before then some of the organizations everything just started to fall into place at the same time it was it's a, it's a miracle you know and then um i started the movie i didn't have the money to complete it 
But I started it regardless, you know, so I got this big crew and it was such an ambitious project for a first film. I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> you know. So big crew, we shot in three states, we shot in Lagos, we shot in Asaba, we shot in Nikiti. Being Mrs. Elliot, that's my first film, you know, and we had this big crew with big vans and we're going from one, <laughs> one state to the other. Like, who does that? Make a simple film as your first film, but no, I'm going to decide to make a big film, you know. I, but somehow or the other, all the monies came through and in the end we finished the film and we paid everybody and everyone was happy, you know, and, and it came out really, really beautifully. There were so many times I cried, you know, during the shoot, like I just was like, oh my gosh, who sent me, <laughs> you know, but then it was, it, was a, it was a great experience. I think if I had made a small, cute story, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. I probably wouldn't be the risk taker that I am today. I probably wouldn't be able to reach for bigger and better all the time you know so so i'm kind of glad that i did an ambitious project for my first film <laughs> being mrs Elliot was my directorial debut but before being mrs Elliot, i co-produced a movie with blessing Egbe. she used to be f young at the time a movie called the rivals you know we did everything on that project you know two days ago i saw um behind the scenes footage from that project and i was just laughing like we did everything <laughs> we're the set design. We're the set designers. We 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 joined the makeup team. Like we were doing every single thing we produced. We we did the editing ourselves. Like we sat in the studio. We had an editor, but he was so bad. He was like incredibly terrible. So so we sat and we'll be like, you know what? Cut it here. Don't do this. And take that away. Just add that because he he didn't know what he was doing. So he was just manning the equipment that's all he did we edited the film ourselves we did everything you know costume design all you know so i think that kind of um also taught me a lot on production as well like you know you can so even up till now it's crazy like i have the best crew really you know but i still find myself joining everybody's team doing one thing or they're like director go away <laughs> you know but i i, I still I, I guess it's just who i am like i try to be in everything you know, um, so that was so. Being Miss Elliot was my first film as a director, but it wasn't my first film as a producer because I'd co produced before then. Before we started shoots, I was actually nervous because I'd not directed before. It was my first time as a director, and I was going to be directing um, not just tiny people or people who had not done anything before, like myself. You know, if you're directing a bunch of rookie actors, it'll be fine because we're all rookie. <laughs> rookie director, rookie actors, let's go. We'll do it any which way, you know. But I had Majid on my set, I had AY on my set. So I had all these people who knew what they were doing. So it wasn't like I was just going to bubble them and do anything and it'll be fine, you know. But um, I was confident that I knew what I was doing as well. So even though I was nervous, I didn't think I was going to fail. I didn't think I, I wouldn't know what to do, right? So yes, I was nervous, but I was confident that I knew what I was doing. And it was, it, we went through the first day and, and it was fine. <laughs> There's so many people that I look up to. I don't know if I fashion what I do after them, but there's so many people that I look up to. Um, I look up to Tyler Perry a lot because somehow I kind of see myself in him. Um, he does a lot in production as well. So he writes, he produces, he directs, he acts. I do all of those things in every of my productions so far. Um, he obviously, he's executive producer as well on his project. I'm that as well on my project. So. I, I see his journey, the fact that this is a man that at a point was living in his car because he couldn't even afford rent, you know, and see today he has a big studio, he's like so accomplished, you know, so, so I see his journey and I admire that, you know, so I look up to him a lot. Um, even here in Nigeria, there's so many people that I look up to. I, I mean, M.M. Song has come a long way, you know, um, even, even when I met M.M., yes, she had produced so many movies. But she wasn't half, not even a quarter as accomplished as she is today. Because mostly then she was producing movies for marketers. So most of those movies were not even her personal jobs, right? So um, I can almost say I grew with her, you know, because I've seen, I've seen her journey from way back then when she was living in one tiny, tiny, tiny little apartment somewhere on the mainland to today, you know, where she's in like a big old house by herself and, yeah, and her family and everything you know so I've, I've kind of grown with her over the years so she's one person that inspires me a lot as well and then of course there's Mo, Mo Abudu and how 
how she's such a risk taker. Like she does really big projects. She doesn't bat an eyelid. She just says what she wants and she goes for it, you know. So, so there's so many women as well in my circle that inspire me that I look up to and I'm like, yeah, she can do it. I can do it. Well, so role models are different. So I could admire a certain part of you. I don't, it doesn't have to be every part of you. And that, that does not mean you're not a good person or whatever. But I could admire your business acumen. And I just think I want to be great in business like this person. You might not even be in my line of business. You know, I mean, I look, I look at people like um, Tara. And it, we, don't, we don't do the same business in any way, shape or form. But I say, wow, you know, this is someone who's grown a small makeup business that she started with how much a hundred dollars to, uh, to to god knows how much hundreds of millions you know so um so i look at people di different parts of their lives i can look at someone's marriage and think oh i'd love my marriage to be that way so when i get a script as an actor i obviously first of all go through this whole script and then i start to look at my character and i start to look at how my character relates with other characters in in the story or in the script and then um, it depends on what kind of character it is. There's some characters that need you to do a lot of external research. There's some characters that you're, you're not familiar with at all. So for instance, if, if I were going to play a surgeon, I have no idea about how to be a surgeon. I've never been a surgeon before. I didn't study medicine, you know, so I would have to do a lot of external research for that. I'd have to read about it. I'd have to probably sit with a surgeon I'll, I'll probably have to watch a surgeon do their thing so I can I can um, tell how they do it. The good thing about it is that the internet is such an amazing place, you know. So before now, I'd probably have to go to a hospital and sit with a surgeon. But almost everything is available to you on the internet. I can watch a lot of stuff online to see how, how do they behave, how do they hold their hands, for instance. Like the Perhaps the surgeon would not have manicured nails. Perhaps, you know, so the, those are the little things that you look at. So make your character even, first of all, look believable. You know, so how do they sound? You know, are they, are they confident when they're talking about certain things? So it's also, also um, you now look at the scenes in the script as well. So is there a part when they, where they're talking to um, the, the family of a patient that just died? You know, so how do they do that? You know, so so there's there, there are different things that that you look at when you're trying to prepare for a role, you know. But I'm just so thankful for the internet today. It just makes everything so much easier. Every, almost every information is available. Almost every role has been played by someone out there. So you can actually even watch movies that have um, roles that are similar to yours and see, okay, how did how did this people how did this person um, interpret this role? Is that what this particular one is about? So of course you have to speak to your director as well to be sure what their um, direction for that character is. So you're not preparing this way and then your director comes and just throws you somewhere else altogether. Well, so far, um, the scripts that I've directed, I, I wrote myself, you know, so even from the writing, I already know what I want. Now, um, when we start getting closer to shoot time and then we're doing like intense pre-production, I sit with my DP and we go through every scene one after the other. You know, so I, 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 because I need my DP to understand where I'm going and what I want. So we don't get on set and we start talking, arguing about shots and saying, no, oh, let's take it from here or let's take it from that angle. So from the beginning, we know I, we go through every single scene and we're like, okay, I want this scene to start with this particular shot, right? So maybe I want a drone shot to start this scene. So, so we know that when we get on set, we're definitely taking a drone shot because that's how when we get to edit, we're starting it with the drone shot. So we're, so it, it's, it's so many things where we're pretty much editing and shooting before we even, before we even get on set, you know, or, or I want the scene to start with this girl's face with the tears coming down her eyes. So we know that that is one of the shots we're going to take when we get on set. You know, I want, I want it to pull out from her face. So we know we're definitely using a dolly or something for that so so it, that informs so many things that even informs what kind of equipment you get on set so we know okay we need a drone on this production we need we need tracks and a dolly on this production we need because we already know what kind of shots we want to take you know but if we don't know then we're just packing everything you know what i mean so we actually go to location before shoot we go to every single location say okay um what's the light 
like here how much light do we need on this on this particular set in this particular room okay what shots are we taking so we're going to take a shot from this angle or from that angle so that helps everybody in production you know so it, it also helps um, the set designer it helps it helps everyone so everyone knows what they're doing so set designer knows okay this is what i'm working with i need to come with this 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 that i need to bring a picture frame to put here because the director is taking a shot from here and i want a picture frame to be in the background so the wall is not blank you know so there, there's so, there's so much work but i i believe strongly in pre-production when your pre-production is done thoroughly you hardly ever have problems on set it, it it just it just kills all the issues that you would have you know so because you're prepared you know what you want and and you can achieve it and that also um you make sure it it helps you not to have um lapses or overlapped or you know like so the last production we finished on the day we're supposed to we actually finished at 4 p.m the day we're supposed to finish because we because we had planned so well you know and we knew what we wanted and we went for what we wanted and it was just it was just easy and seamless nollywood has its challenges so many of them one of which of course is lack of funds you know you never quite have all the money you want to make a film and so you're you're having to pinch pennies and crimp and you know so somehow or the other it shows in our productions that we don't have as much money as we want to to make it happen so um yes i would say we've had challenges with money um we we make it work somehow you know um it's it informs your writing especially if you're a writer director or your writer producer it you know what you can achieve you know how much money is available to you so it form it informs your writing so because i know i don't have all the money in the world i'm not going to write a story that says let's blow up third million bridge so so it stifles you it holds you back but i mean it's it is what it is it's what we have for now so we so we'll make it work we'll keep going and we'll keep pushing until the time comes when you know the budget increases and it's easy it's maths the more cinemas we have the more money we're going to make back from our movies and the budget will increase it's that's the you know when people say oh you know why are you not spending all this money i'm like I'm, I'm a businesswoman i'm not here just to entertain and just to you know to preach a message which a lot of my movies do but i also have to make my money back because if i don't then i can't make the next film right so um so i know there's certain limits that I cannot cross. I know if I get to this amount, I'm okay. I'll be able to make it back from the cinema, given my track record. But if I go beyond this amount, then I'm, I'm toying with trouble. So I don't. I, I try to stay within my comfort zone in terms of how much money my movies can make back from the cinema realistically. You know? So those are some of the problems that we have. We also have problems of distribution. You know, um, we don't have enough cinemas, obviously. The more cinemas we have, the more money our movies will make. Um, DVD is almost non-existent. The pirates have pretty much taken over that, that market. And it's such a shame because that's a, that's a huge, huge, huge revenue um, platform that they've, they've destroyed. Well, what keeps me going is my determination. I don't... I don't take no for an answer. I, I can hear no and still come back. Like, <laughs> I've heard no so many times, but I still come back. I can hear no from this place and still come back there the next day. I don't let anything stop me. I don't see limitations. I, I don't care what people say. I just keep pushing. Because if you're going to listen to people, you would never achieve anything. Because people would try to put you down. You know, so... I, I surround myself with a lot of positivity. I don't. I really don't do negative. If if there's an is a, if there's an environment that is negative, I don't. I don't put myself there because I mean I'm an adult. I you make the decision where you want to be or not. If the environment is negative, then just don't be there. Go away from there. You know. So there are certain groups or stuff like that I, I would not belong to because I just don't see the positive side of it. You know. So I, I try to surround myself with a lot of positivity. I. Um, you know the bible says as much as depends on you live peaceably with all men that that's one of my mantras in life i try to live peaceably with everybody and i just i just keep pushing one of the things that i do to um, remain relevant or remain successful is i every day i try to do something that advances my work or my business like there is no single day that will go by without me actually doing even if it's just one thing that would um, 
make my business better or will make my craft better. You know, so I don't I don't sit down and just expect, oh, you know, we're we're there. No, we're not there. We're still we're still going. There's so much more to do. There's so much more to achieve. Um, I, I see people in front of me every day, and I'm like, wow, this person has done this much, and I'm still here. Like <laughs> you know, the kind of thoughts that keep keep you awake at night, or you know, you're sleeping, and then you suddenly remember this, and you're like, ah, I don't think people are sleeping yet, so let me wake up. <laughs> I don't think people are still in bed. Wake up, wake up and do something, you know. So, um, what keeps me grounded? I think um, my faith and my family. You know, um, I think I'm just like every other person. That's that's. I think that's one of the things. I'm. I don't see myself as oh, you're a celebrity or you're a star or whatever. In my house, I'm just a wife and a mother. There's no big deal to it at all. My, my kids don't think, oh, she's a celebrity, so she shouldn't cook. <laughs> you know, so I'm still mommy. And if they're hungry, mommy has to fix something for them to eat. I mean, it is what it is. So for me, um, I don't, I've never, I, I think it also has a lot to do with my upbringing as well. Like I was brought up to be level-headed. I was brought up to be very, very, very humble. My mother was such god rest her soul just such a humble person she's the kind of person i'll tell you oh you know when you go to that party don't go to the high table go to the back don't go and sit where they will not chase you away <laughs> you know so so i mean it, it's so weird like even till now i still have those um would i say inhibitions i still feel like let me just go and stay at this corner if they want me to to sit at the high table they will call me today. I mean obviously now when you go to places they will tell you to come and sit in front or whatever but I don't feel like I'm, it's an entitlement no it's not an entitlement it's a blessing that you know people recognize you it's a blessing that you walk in the street and people won't take pictures with you so it it doesn't have to happen you know it's like, like so I mean even till now sometimes I say like oh my gosh okay all right and you you just are freaking out because you saw me really <laughs> You know, I still feel, wow, it's just me and it's not a big deal. 